Welcome to Sporadic Phantoms. My name is Robin. I'm Stevie. And I'm Kyle. We can't tell you our last names out of fear of retaliation. In our last episode, we speculated and took action about some important points. We reported my basement sound file using the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's anonymous tip line. No need to state your name. This is an anonymous tip line. Would you like to report a wildlife crime? An FWS special agent agreed to search the sharing's basement. If it's a big cat being kept illegally caged, that's no good. But indoors with no windows, no doubt that would be criminal neglect of an animal, not to mention dangerous. We also played the missing clip from the sharing's live event, which was invaded by a hacker called Share the Truth. If you value your life, do not join the sharing. Who are they? What is their agenda? We still don't know who deleted my file. We know that there's at least one hacker out there who doesn't like what we're doing, and someone must have told them about us. Well, Elizabeth told me the truth, that Stinton wants to take down BU now. Is he trying to control you somehow? What's really going on, Liz? Yes! <laughs> oh, Liz. <gasps> He's... Not only that, but Peter Stinton must have had something to do with Lord David Altman's mysterious death. You didn't actually record her saying anything about that. I'm still trying to record her when I can. Like when Elizabeth had a chat with me after a BU Now session. But I'm going to give you a little push so I can see a little more accountability from you. To try to make me commit more to BU Now, she's given me homework assignments outside of the sessions. And somehow she knows information about me that I didn't divulge. That was really suspicious. And because it's suddenly more difficult to actually investigate Elizabeth, we called a cult expert, Richard Dolan, to help us find out where the danger in the sharing really lies. You've severely limited your ability to work objectively and access information. Therefore, you need someone like me to come in and reveal the truth. Someone with the sensitivity, the knowledge, and the eye. We're still waiting on his results. And after the FWS searched the sharing's basement, we gave them a call again to see what they found, but... You know what we saw? A leaky boiler. No animals to speak of. No cages. Nothing. I told them they should call the gas company. It only proved that the government agencies are covering something up. Or we were just wrong about your sound file. And then... Real proof that we're being monitored on multiple fronts, the probably cybernetic birds following and watching us. And my webcam recording us on its own. Dear the sharing. We have enough evidence by now to know you are listening to us, watching us. We know that you know all about our investigation. But we're not going to let that stop us. Follow us all you want. We'll keep our information safe. We know better now. We'll still record you, obviously. And before you think that you can report us to law enforcement for violating California's all-party consent law, private citizens can get around the law against eavesdropping if they record a conversation in order to gather evidence that they reasonably believe is related to one of the following crimes. Extortion, kidnapping, bribery, or any felony involving violence against another person. I mean, that pertains to our recordings, right? Yes. Most of them. No matter what Dolan thinks. But now that Richard Dolan is helping us, we're finally going to piece everything together. Not that we wouldn't eventually figure everything out without him. We aren't going to let you intimidate us. We're seeing this through to the very end. And if you are endangering anyone, or threatening anyone, we'll see to your end. Sincerely, Sporadic Phantoms. Today's the day. We're going to hear from Dolan. What has he been doing this past month? He's been off doing his thing at the sharing. I haven't seen him at the meetings or barbecues. Have either of you seen him around? I mostly only go there for BU now at this point. I barely see anyone, besides my cohort, and Elizabeth, and sometimes Pamela or Hedrick in passing. Whatever he's doing, he was right. He's not letting himself get overly involved. He's investigating in ways we wouldn't think of. 
professional ways. We may not be licensed private investigators. We may be slightly unconventional. We may not have studied journalism or forensics or criminal justice, but there's nothing wrong with our gonzo journalism approach. I'm still a little offended that Dolan thinks we are overly involved. I mean, it's investigating, not out-investigating. Oh, and we should mention that this time we're meeting Dolan in a more neutral location. We rented out a recording studio at a co-working space. Well, just for today. These places get expensive. I didn't find any bugs in our studio after he left, so Stinton's methods of spying on us must be connected to our IP addresses, or maybe through our Google accounts, or however that kind of hacking works. We've made sure those points are more secure now, and I think we're safer here. It's quite a reach to think Nolan's secretly working for the president of the sharing. Yeah, but he's still going to be sharing sensitive information with us. This was a good move, Kyle. And there aren't any windows. Oh, for the birds to look in. Yes. Fast forward to Dolan arriving. This time he carried a briefcase with him and a small paper bag. He opened the bag and put a pink box on the desk. I hope you like French macaroons. Made with aquafaba, Kyle. Thank you, Richard. You didn't have to. So, how have you three been getting on? We should ask the same of you. Were you even at the sharing this past month? <laughs> Kyle, I've been exploring the sharing in great depth. But I'm not too surprised you didn't notice me there. My stealthiness is simply a testament to my skill. Now, are you prepared to hear my analysis? Yes. Uh, can you tell us what full membership means? Do they force people to stay? And what's in their basement? And if they're dangerous? Let's first be entirely clear. After careful inspection, I have concluded that the sharing is not a dangerous cult. What? What do you mean? Let's start with your questions about full membership, Robin. Full members of the sharing are full members for life. And no one has ever left, according to this roster I found on Pamela's computer. How did you get access to that? I have my ways. So, full members can never leave? They're trapped? On the contrary, I found no signs of enforcing members to stay. Compare full membership to a library card. A full member has access to the sharing's resources, a nice place to hang out, and if they want to leave, they don't have to destroy their library card. It's just there if they need it. And in exchange for full membership, they show their dedication to upholding the sharing's values. But that still doesn't answer the question. What is full membership? Frankly, I would have assumed that by now, the three of you would have a more thorough understanding of the sharing's core philosophies. You've all made the error of thinking that full membership could mean something other than just what it is. But the sharing itself is the goal. Those who believe in the sharing believe you have to serve the greater good in order to achieve, to join with a larger reality. They imagine a brighter future in which the collective serves and uplifts the community. Robin, they are a socialist organization. Huh? I could have told you that much. They don't describe themselves as socialists. Why would they keep it a secret? Socialism is a bad word nowadays. Can you blame them for not wanting to scare people off? Okay, but what about their ultimate secret knowledge? Ah, yes. There is a layer of secrecy to the sharing. The code words, the names. However, you are confused. This secrecy is imposed upon the sharing. Yes, I told you both. The sharing itself is fine. The secrecy is because of Stinton. Because of Peter Stinton? Not likely. But... Kyle. Peter Stinton is a wealthy entrepreneur, an anti-capitalist capitalist, I suppose. If Peter Stinton was doing anything you claim, like operating an animal trafficking ring, he has enough resources to not have to use the basement of a community center. Then what 
is in their basement. When we spend too much time on speculation, we stray towards flights of fancy. You three seem to believe that all the answers are tied to what is physically stored underneath the sharing. A convenient place for secrets to be kept, for sure. A wonderful metaphor for the unconscious. Metaphor? I, of course, easily slip down to the basement, flashlight in hand. Nothing is stored down there. There's nothing there? Are you sure? Yes. In terms of what you've suspected, Kyle, no weaponry, no scientific devices, no animals, no biomedical materials, no tunnels. There's nothing. Besides some extra furniture? Though they should also take a look at their plumbing situation. Then what about the tiger? What about human sounds? The sharing doesn't use the basement for storage of anything out of the ordinary. That doesn't exclude the possibility that activities may take place there. What kind of activities? I became acquainted with all the leaders of the sharing. That lovely woman at the front desk, Pamela. I had several conversations with Hedrick Chapman and his wife. Nice family. I even chatted with young Tom Berenson. <laughs> the kid's going places. But out of all the sharing's leaders, who among them might require additional use of a multi-purpose space, such as the basement? Certainly someone with fewer resources than Mr. Stinton. Perhaps someone who might need to use such a place, out of sight of other sharing members, for, as Stevie claims to have heard, distressing activities. We must look to someone in the sharing who leads people to commit to extra activities outside the scope of a typical full member track. Elizabeth. Precisely. The once per week BU Now sessions led by Miss Elizabeth Lee, as we know, take place in a yoga room. But outside of BU Now sessions, the space is booked for other activities, yoga, Zumba, etc. As we also know, Miss Lee gives BU Now participants additional work outside of her workshops. Robin, you are familiar with this. Yes, her homework. Elizabeth Lee tailors the experience of each BU Now participant. For some, she requires further work akin to the exercises of the BU Now sessions. So she was just using the basement for more BU Now exercises when the yoga room was booked. <sighs> if it were only that simple. Miss Lee claims to have adapted Lord David Altman's philosophies into a practical curriculum. However, why does BU Now require more work to prepare for full membership than other more mainstream tracks? After my analysis, it is clear that it is not because what Miss Lee is doing is more thorough, it's because, over time, she has distorted the sharing's philosophies. What Miss Lee is requiring her participants to do outside of the bounds of irregular sessions is cause for concern. And this leads us back to what is the true source of the layers of secrecy that have been imposed upon the sharing? It is Miss Elizabeth Lee. This doesn't make any sense. We have to remember how we got here in the first place. What does Elizabeth have anything to do with what was happening in Los Madres National Forest? What about Matcom? What about the California Spotted Owl? I haven't discounted any of those things. What happened in the National Forest, what is happening in the basement, and the reason for all the sharing secrecy, these things are all linked. Okay, yes. But uh, not in a way you'd think, Kyle. I'd like to show you all something. I uncovered this correspondence in my research. What is this? Emails? These are from Elizabeth. They're from Elizabeth, but look who they're addressed to. Stephen Ferrand? No. What is this? She's... She's offering him money to approve the Dapson project. I'd call that bribery. How she obtained this money? Why she would be speaking for the Dapson Corporation from her personal email address? And why the sharing feels the need to hide what she's up to? Why she is running BU now in such a way? Well, I believe there's much more where this came from. This is only the beginning. But I will need more time, 
and your cooperation to uncover it. If we team up on this, I am certain that we can finally understand what's the real trouble in this organization. No, thank you. We're good. Very well, then. What? No, Kyle! As I have done what I promised, we can leave it at that. You know my Venmo information for the remaining balance. No, no, you can't stop there. You can't just leave us with this. I'm fine with him leaving. We aren't. In fact, I think he needs to leave immediately. So sorry, Richard. I can see that as an investigative team, you three still need to work through your dysfunctions. So I'll leave you to it. But Robin, I know you know something's desperately wrong with BU now. Trust your instincts. You don't have to keep suffering through BU now to uncover its secrets. You can call me instead. Stevie, you too. You know my number. This is bullshit! Here we go. How did he get these emails from Elizabeth? How did he get the roster from Pamela's computer? Are those documents even legitimate? None of us saw him at the sharing for a whole month. How could he have gotten more information than we've gotten over the past, what, seven months? It's his job. You see what I'm seeing, right? He's a hacker. And he probably hacked us, too. So which is it? Did he fake the documents? Or did he hack them? He... Whichever one he did, it's bullshit. Face it. Elizabeth has been lying to you. This is the biggest piece of information we've gotten in a while. We need to follow this lead. Kyle, you've been trying to connect everything together. I'm sorry to say, but it looks like this is the key we've been missing all this time. We can't just ignore all the signs that point to Stinton. This is so frustrating, Kyle. You know, so far, the directions that you've taken us in this investigation have led us to nothing. Dolan is right. We've been jumping to outlandish assumptions about what's going on because you've been freaking out and putting us all on edge. There's no tiger, okay? And there's no tunnels either. We've just had two different people go into their basement and tell us there's nothing down there. The only logical thing is that Elizabeth uses the space. I'm taking BU now. I have zero doubt that she would do it. And that she's planning something else, too. Neither of you have dared to investigate BU now with me because you know what she's doing is fucked and you don't want to subject yourselves to it. And it took us spending all that money to hire Dolan to tell us what is obvious to me already because you won't listen to me, Kyle. Then who's hacking us? It's Elizabeth! And I wonder how she was able to access our information. Now who's making assumptions? Stevie and I were willing to listen to you when you freaked out about birds spying on us. Anything not to implicate Lizzie Bear. You know, why are we even continuing to embarrass ourselves like this in front of all of our listeners? Oh, and Elizabeth is listening too. And you know what? I'm sure she's laughing at you. They are watching us and she wanted to stop them. Ferrand, Kyle. She was talking to Ferrand. Whose name was attached to the Dapson project? Stinton. We've never even seen Peter Stinton. He doesn't come to the sharing. He's MIA. How are we supposed to investigate him anyway? I... I don't know, but... <sighs> Hold on, I should answer this. Hello? Nancy? Hey, Kyle. How are you guys doing with your investigation? Well, unfortunately, I don't know where we're headed anymore. Oh, listen, I was just calling because there's something you three should know. What is it? Did you hear about the event going on in two weeks? What event? The benefit dinner. Benefit dinner? I thought you wouldn't know about it. See, you know how the sharing is partnering with the Defenders, Tomato Growers Anonymous, and everyone for new programming? Well, things are really moving forward with that. The sharing wants to put a lot of money into the program and make it statewide before they expand it nationally. That's great, Nancy. Kyle, the money means they're courting some new donors. So this benefit dinner they're having is pretty exclusive. 
It's not technically for regular people at the sharing. The donors will be there? Oh yes, I have to dress up and everything. It's free for full members and their families, and for the guest speakers, but for everyone else, this thing is a thousand dollars a plate. No idea what I'm going to wear. A thousand dollars a plate? <laughs> Sorry, Nancy. We just blew our extra cash on a huge mistake. Thanks for letting us know about it, though. Kyle, this is where I thought ahead. I reserved three extra spots for the sporadic phantoms, courtesy of the West Coast Forest Defenders. Really? Nancy, thank you. I thought you'd be interested in the opportunity to get up close and personal with the people who really run the show, you know? Those guys on the board you were talking about. The board? Wait! Nancy, does this mean that Peter Stinton will be there? Oh yeah, he is the big draw for these rich people after all. I don't believe for a second any of them really care about what the Defenders are doing. Nancy! I love you. We'll definitely be there. All right. Let me just fax you over those tickets. Fax? N no, Nancy, emailing is fine. As soon as I figure out how to attach a PDF, you got it. There's your answer. We can go, but this is it. There's probably not going to be another opportunity to get near Stinton. The sharing knows we record them with our phones. Shouldn't we just have Dolan collect more info? He's clearly more proficient at it than we are. I'm not ready to trust any of the information he gives us. We'll have to record with our phones and hope we can still get something. No. Here. What is that? This is a recorder. Really? Yeah, I bought it like a week ago, so I would have a better chance at recording Elizabeth. That's so tiny. Looks like a flash drive. Does it have a USB? Don't describe it too much. They're listening. I figured I could have it on my person, even if my phone gets confiscated. Or we could always hide it somewhere to record and pick it up later. Much less noticeable than a phone. And it doesn't have any personal information on it like a phone does either. Hmm. This could change things. This episode will air well after the event, so they won't be expecting us to use this. So our plan for the event... We still record on our phones, but we also find an opportunity to use this. That way we aren't totally relying on having to be physically close to who we might want to overhear. I'll admit that leaving my phone in the yoga room that one time was really risky. This could be better. Where would we even put that at the dinner? I have no idea. <laughs> Sounds promising. Other than that, I assume we just go with the flow and not worry about poking our heads into too many random conversations? You know if they see us around, at this point, they're not going to say anything they don't want us to hear. Not all of the people there will be members of the sharing. The sharing is trying to attract new donors who won't know we'd be recording. We just need to be cautious around the sharing leaders and any members of the board. But if this is our only chance to record Stinton, we have to make sure we get to him, and anyone else important who might be there, like the CEO of Matcom. Okay, but if we don't find anything that would significantly conflict with what Dolan was telling us, we can't keep chasing Stinton anymore. We need to focus on Elizabeth, and we're calling Dolan. We'll get something. I think I have to rent a tux. God, yeah, we have to look less poor somehow. Sounds like we should hit up the Center Valley Mall. Sporadic Phantoms will resume after these messages. On the next Barry and Cindy Sue show, Black Widow herself, Scarlett Johansson, on her new movie and her new baby bump. Congratulations to you and Colin. Thank you. Isn't she just stunning, folks? And Cindy Sue surprises child dance crew The Stepsons with one physically enormous check. I was told these are not valid checks. Then, Sandra Lee is back at it with holiday entertaining tips and tablescapes. Talk about a dish best served hot. 
And it's Fitness Friday with Sandy Sue's crush, Silver Fox, Anderson Cooper. She barely knows I'm here. Give me liberty or give me Anderson. The latest moves to get you in shape. Plus, check out the world's smallest and largest pooches. It's Superdog Week's grand finale. I told my wife we don't need another Terry. With musical guests, Boys 11 Men. And don't miss Jeff Corwin's heartfelt apology one year after the incident that terrified and shocked our audience. Tell us, what really happened that day with the alligator? Crocodile. I swear it wasn't mine, but I'm sorry about the lot. We've got a great week ahead. And we can't wait to spend our mornings with you. It all happens on The Barry and Cindy Sue Show. The Barry and Cindy Sue Show, weekdays at 10 on KSBY. We drove together to the sharing on the night of the benefit dinner. Things looked different than usual. They had set up velvet ropes and lights leading up to the entrance of the building with some of those decorative fire columns. Another thing that was different was the security. There were some burly looking guys stationed around the whole building. A large black limo was in the parking lot taking up several spots. Other limos, Uber Blacks, and even Uber Luxes circled around the driveway and dropped off people at the entrance. This event would be indoors. Did they not want to risk one of those hawks ruining the speeches again? Why would Stinton be at this environmental event if he got one of his bird drones to sabotage that other event they had? Could it be because he would divert the funds raised towards his own sinister purposes? Now we just had to get in. But would they turn us away? One thing looked familiar. Pamela was at the entrance with the guest list. Robin, Kyle, Stevie. Hello, Pamela. I don't believe you're on the list. We're on the guest list of plus three. Oh, so you are. Is there a problem with that? No, no, not at all. Welcome. Enjoy. Thanks. I hope you can gain more insight about the sharing tonight. Mr. Stinton is an excellent speaker. Is he? What has he been telling you, Pamela? Let's go. Well, she didn't stop us from entering. That's good. She has to keep up the facade. If she didn't allow us in, then we'd really know they don't want us near Stinton. The community center has this big auditorium space. I had never seen it like this before. They really went all out. They had set up round tables with white tablecloths, flower centerpieces, hanging chandeliers, decorative arches, the works. There was a jazz trio playing. There were waiters in suits walking around serving drinks and appetizers. Where do we sit? The uh, here? There are name tags. Oh, the tickets say which table. WCFD guest one. WCFD guest two. WCFD guest three. Sounds like us. Hi. Hi, I saw you come in. Nancy, you look great. Oh, please. Thank you for the tickets. I can't stick around too long, but I just wanted to say hi. Uh, yeah, Nancy, it might be best if you're not seen with us too much. Oh, no sweat. Unfortunately, I need to talk up the defenders to all these rich people before we go up on stage. But let me know if you need anything. I'm at the table all the way, stage left. Good luck with the investigating. Oh my god. Now what? Okay, we scope out the area, locate the important people. I'll keep tabs on Hedrick and the other sharing leaders. We don't want to get too close to them this time. 
we want to use this to record people who we don't normally see. Okay, Robin, so you can schmooze a bit with the new donors. Uh, yeah. I have to find Stinton. That limo out there must have been his. He must be here already. Then we figure out what to do with your recorder thing. Ladies, gentlemen, uh, what drinks can I get you this evening? Oh, I didn't look at the menu yet. May I recommend one of our custom cocktails? Ooh, ooh, that sounds good. Mmm, how about the Condrona Sunrise? We have to remain alert, Stevie. <sighs> Actually, just a seltzer water then, thanks. Same for me. Me too. Very good. I was just trying to take advantage of this thousand dollar meal. We're not here to enjoy ourselves. Okay, let's go. We split up. I'd been to the sharing a million times, but never had I felt so out of place there. And I'm not a good schmoozer. But I scanned the crowd. There were some people that I had seen around the sharing, and a lot of people I didn't recognize. I didn't see Elizabeth, no Jess, no Nicole or Craig or Maddie. I saw Tom sitting with what clearly looked like his family. Mom, dad, little brother. His dad looked bored. His mom looked uncomfortable. And his little brother looked pissed. Like this was the last place on earth that he wanted to be. <laughs> I could relate. I spotted Hedrick and his wife, but Stevie was already on it. Was she going to try to talk to them? No. She moved on. She knew better than that, obviously. She was doing her job. I was just on edge. And now my job was to spot anyone else of note. And then I saw a middle-aged guy in glasses and a short beard kind of salt and pepperish hair. I'd seen his picture before. Was that? It was. Will Dyers. The Forest Service guy on the board of the sharing. The guy who knew Ferrand. Could I actually talk to him? Even if I did, what could I expect him to say that would help us at all? Or could I find someone who'd been talking with him? Maybe if I could just get closer. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Mr. Dyers. Robin. Shit. Robin, I didn't think I'd see you here. Blair, this is Robin. Robin's been with us for a while and is quite an environmentalist herself. I'm sure she'd be happy to talk with you more about her experiences. Now, if you'll excuse me. Hi. So nice to meet you. Hi. Quirky style. I love it. So environmentally friendly. You do you, girl. Thanks. You must be one of the members. Uh, no, not really. Patrick was just telling me about how they're motivating the disadvantaged children to make something of themselves, save the crabs and all that. It's just fabulous. The horseshoe crabs really suffer here in the Pacific, you know. It's just not natural for them. And the sharing finds the work of my foundation so vital. We're helping the sharing establish a center on the East Coast where the crabs are thriving, just thriving. And it's about time. My husband and I have been so looking forward to finally having a sharing center near our summer home in Montauk. It won't be quite like this center. We're looking into a more upscale experience. And not that our son would be involved with forest cleanups or anything like that. <laughs> We just flew in from Boston. Our son just spoke with the head of the tennis team at Harvard, and they were very interested in him. Blair, did you speak with William Dyers at all tonight? Who? The secretary? No, I can't say I know too much about him. Why? Oh, well, do you know where he is? I just saw him. Now I don't know where he went. I'm sure he's getting ready for the speeches. Are they supposed to start the speeches soon? My husband already went off to prepare to speak about our foundation. And of course, Peter Stinton is surely already backstage preparing in his private dressing room. I told them, how is Terrence expected to get ready to speak if he doesn't have his own dressing room as well? Backstage. Anyway, my foundation has... Gotta go, sorry. Well, excuse me. Excuse me. 
Excuse me. I sent a text to Kyle and Stevie. Meet me at the table now. Jeez, how long does it take to get a couple of seltzers? Did that waiter forget our drinks? I guess so. Guys. What's up? What's going on? They're about to do the speeches. Will Dyers is here. Maybe other members of the board. They're all gathering backstage. And Stinson's in his private dressing room. Okay, so what can we do? We need to put that recorder in the dressing room. Look over there. Do you see how much security is guarding the door to get backstage? They're not going to let any of us in. Uh, yeah. We're gonna have to wait until Stinton comes out after. If he comes out at all. Unless those guys think I'm going to give a speech. Let me see that thing. God, Kyle, really? Really. <sighs> Here. Nineteen hours and thirty-two minutes, I'm about to plant the device. Once I can get past the guards. Excuse me, fellas. I'm about to go on stage in five minutes, so if I can just get through... Um, you'll need to unblock the door. Everyone here is going to be very disappointed if I don't speak tonight. And you are? Don't you know who I am? I'm... I need to get through, please. You're gonna need to step away. Now. Wait! I'm part of the West Coast Forest Defenders! I... Oh. Nancy! hours, 34 minutes, I was just diverted away from the stage area by Stinton's thugs, but if I can find Nancy Candleton before she gets backstage with the Defenders, I can instruct her to plant the device there. Now to find her. The table was... Ah! There she is! Ah, I'm very sorry. Sorry. Uh, it's okay. Uh, excuse me, uh, I must serve small mollusks. Lusks. Oh, uh, sorry. By the way, we still need those seltzers at table 27 if it's not too much trouble. I will bring a dish of seltzers. Zers. 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 Uh, thanks. Okay. Was she right? Nancy. <laughs> Sorry, just one moment. Oh, Kyle, I'm just about to gather with the defenders. You're going to make a speech, right? Yes. Wish me luck. Good luck. Um, Nancy, you're going to pass through the backstage area, right? I guess we are. Okay. There's a major way you can help us tonight. What do you need? When you go back there, we need you to plant a small recording device wherever Peter Stinton is getting ready. Even if it's just outside his dressing room door, I think it will pick up what's going on inside. And then, when you pass back through after your speech, you can grab it again and hand it to us at our table. Do you think you can do that? Wow. Kyle, I can try. My first time investigating. Great. There's only one button you need to press on it. Let me show you. No, hold on. Where is it? Where is it? No. 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 Uh, Nancy, I'm, I'm sorry. I must have dropped it somewhere. Let me find it really quick. Kyle, I'm so sorry. They're calling me over now. I hope you find it. 19 hours, 38 minutes. The device is dropped. No, not like dropped in the dressing room. I mean, I dropped it somewhere by accident. Tracing my steps. Oops, sorry. Ow, sorry. No. No, no. Shit. That was the baby center. We need to. Thank <sighs> you.
Let me guess, you couldn't get back there. No, I couldn't. Okay, well, you tried. We just wait and find another opportunity to plant the recorder somewhere. If that could even happen tonight. And if not, then it's okay. We don't know if that would have recorded anything important anyway. No, guys, I'm sorry. What did you do? I lost it. I must have dropped it. Kyle! Okay, there goes that plan. And $95? And our chance at recording be now until I get a new one. I can try retracing my steps again. Ah, I think I know when it fell. Now I need a drink. Sorry, where is our waiter? Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. I have to go find it. Chill. If you're looking, everyone's going to notice you. There's nothing on it anyway. Let's just listen to the speeches and figure it out later. Thank you all for your presence on this wonderful evening. The sharing is grateful to have so many influential and distinguished supporters of our cause. Thanks to your charitable contributions, we are able to expand our outreach and our mission more than ever before. And you get to be a part of it. Your generous donations are an investment in the future of humanity. I am proud to present a man who needs no introduction, but I'll give him one anyway. A man with a vision. A man with a great sense of purpose. A man in whom we at The Sharing have the utmost confidence and whose innovative ideas and fiery passion promise a new era for The Sharing. With him, we look to the future of The Sharing and of the planet. Please welcome to the stage, President of The Sharing, Peter Stenton. Thank you, Mr. Chapman. Friends, I can call you my friends, right? <laughs> We're all friends here. And to many, the sharing has even become a big extended family. I came to the sharing, hoping to honor and carry on the legacy of our founder, Lord David Altman. Altman had great ideas. He was a Great man and is sorely missed. But the world is changing. The world has different needs now in 2021. And indeed, the human mind itself has changed over time. The sharing must respond to the modern needs of society. As you know, under my presidency came the development of full member tracks. Their creation has allowed sharing membership to become accessible to people from all walks of life. And in the interest of accessibility and response to the times, we are announcing two new full member tracks. In order to refocus our efforts on these new tracks, we'll also eventually be phasing out some of our more obsolete tracks that no longer serve the sharing's values. So out with the old and in with the new, I say. As you will hear this evening, we've developed successful partnerships with environmental organizations who have helped shape our new full member track, the environmental track. Tonight, we will hear more about this program and how it will propel the sharing to the national stage and how your philanthropy makes it possible. <coughs> Second, but certainly not least, I'm happy to announce the patron track. After a very special additional contribution, you will be able to gain access to all the benefits of the sharing, including automatic full membership. And after this evening, we will be sure to follow up with each of you regarding this highly exclusive offer. Pay to play? Are these people really socialists? But before we hear from our guest speakers tonight, I would like to say one more thing. Our goal is to take over the world with brotherhood. And by joining together in service of something greater, we will eliminate anyone, anything, 
standing in the way of our goal. Thank you. Okay, so after that, the speeches went on for a while. Nancy did a good job with hers. It's important to teach kids that their voices matter, that they can have a say in what happens to our national forests, and that they can fight the system. We all have to do the work in solidarity for our children and for She's the, the only honest person hours. here. Eventually, I saw Robin starting to nod off. Kyle was staring off in his own world. There was really nothing we could do. It's not too important to include all the content from the speeches here. I mean, you get the picture. And we didn't hear anything about Elizabeth or even anything from Will Dyers. And we didn't see the Matcom guy there, much to Kyle's disappointment. I was beginning to think that this was a total bust. Finally, the speech has ended. Here is your food. Food. Did you guys order? Whatever. I'm starving. Uh, sorry, I didn't order the calamari. This is your dinner. Sir? No, no, really, it's not mine. Take the kalama. Kalamarati. Kalamamamla. Uh, squids. Huh? Take the plate now. I'll... But I said I didn't... Oh. Who, who said that? Said what? Did someone pick at that already? Wait, wait! Come back! What was up with that guy? He... The calamari has... Guys. I'm sorry I couldn't be much help earlier, Kyle, but I thought I could introduce you. Huh? Oh! With whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? This is Kyle, and Robin, and Stevie. They're big environmentalists. Of course. Don't we all just love the Earth here? Do we all? Our environmental track would be perfect for you, then. What brought you all to the sherry? We were curious. We wanted to figure some things out, like what the sharing has in mind for the environment. We were curious about why people care about the sharing so much. Curious about you, and about where all this money really goes. Interesting. I'm not hearing curiosity, I'm hearing doubt. My advice to you, don't become cynical. Believe it or not, there are cynics out there who believe we're not who we say we are, or that I'm not who I say I am. But look at everyone here. Look at all the work that's being done. It's funny though, anytime we come across such cynics, the sharing wins them over soon enough. Every single time, without fail, the sharing wins. Excuse me, I think I need to continue making my rounds. Pleasure to meet all of you. Miss Candleton, I'll meet with your group before the night is over. Let's get out of here. I hope this whole thing was useful for you. I just want to say, I still believe in you guys. I gotta say, the sharing has been a great thing for the defenders in our work. But I still believe you'll be able to find out if there's any dirty money floating around. I'll still keep an eye out for you. Thanks. We're about to leave. Are you going to head out soon, too? Oh, I don't think I can. Well, see, I think the Defenders are going to surprise me with something tonight. Well, congratulations, Nancy. Oh, they really don't have to. And they know, I know, they're up to something. But I'll have to act all surprised anyway. I should go meet up with them. I'll see you around. Can you... Let us know if Stinton mentions anything strange to your group. I'll be honest and say I don't expect he would reveal anything unethical to us. But my ears would be open anyway. Good night. Can we do anything else here? I don't know. It looks like Stinton and Dyers are both going off with the Defenders. That would have been the perfect moment to sneak in that recorder. But here we are. We're not going to see them for the rest of the night. We should just go to the studio. It's a little late, don't you think? Considering we didn't really get recordings, we'll have to pour over and analyze immediately. I think we should meet there anyway. Let's just look at what we have. Should we take a look at his speech again? 
Yeah. Let's do that. <sighs> okay, but only if we can pick up some iced coffees on the way there. Yeah, and food. Some thousand dollar meal that was. Play it from the beginning or what? Okay, no, I, I don't want to listen to his speech again. Then why are we here? You wanted to listen to Stinton. And guess what? We have a recording of him now. Stevie and I were both willing to give you the benefit of the doubt and try to get close to him. Because what else are we going to do? Bust down the door to his mansion? This was our chance. And you lost my recorder. You mean uh, this? You found it. Someone else found it. On the floor somewhere? No. It was in the calamari. Ew, what? That's weird and gross, but at least we have it now. There's something on it. Marinara? Something on it. Was it turned on? I didn't turn it on, but I really think there's something on it. Let me plug it into my laptop. If it recorded accidentally, it's just going to be one long recording of random noise. Then can we at least see if it got ruined by the sauce? Huh? Three files? With file names? Sharing one, two, and three? I told you. Robin, did you already have files on there? No. Kyle, did you record something that you didn't tell us about? I didn't do this. Th that waiter. It was the waiter. Well, there is a password. We can't listen to them anyway. I think I know the password. Okay, did the waiter tell you? No, but I heard it. Well, I, I didn't hear it. I, I know the password. I heard it in my head, okay? Excuse me? Look. It is the password. What is going on? Shh. I searched the room thoroughly in this studio six. No one is recording us. Is that Pamela? They tend to listen through doors. Have you checked outside the room? Yes, yes. And the cameras show that they are not in the building at all. And where is Karant 291 and her helper? What's her name? Reslin 9488. They are speaking with a BU Now participant in Koran's office in- This isn't from tonight. So much unnecessary time and effort put into softening their minds. So, what is our progress concerning this ridiculous investigation? We've learned their identities from Germa 613. What? Robin <laughs> Kyle <laughs> and Stevie Stevens? <laughs> <laughs> Stevie- but of course, we already knew that. Why did we not just take them all by force like the Visser wants? Let's get it over with. Eventually, it will probably come to that. But not while Karant 291 is still hovering around. Can't we just let the Visser do what he wants with her? Why do we need to go through with all of this? That would not go unnoticed. She is nearly a sub -visor. She wishes. But yes. Let's not provoke the Visitor's rashness further. You all know he did not hesitate to become rash with me. Yes. So first we use the investigation for our purposes, and then we take them. We make sure the sharing is no longer called into question. Is this all going to work? It's already in motion, with assistance from Germis 613 and now from Larash 384. The Visitor will be pleased that this plan will, as they say, kill three birds with one stone. And where is Girma 613 now? Girma 613 must keep a low profile in order for the visitor's demands to be carried out. They must blend in seamlessly with the investigators and not arouse suspicion. Yes, we can't expect Girma to always be at these meetings. It's just the same as others whose hosts have family obligations. Let Girma's carry out what they must do while we plan the necessary materials for Lairash 384. Are we sure that Courant doesn't know about this? Courant? Reslin? Innes. 
Were you all standing here in silence, or were you talking about me? We were discussing the status of the investigators. What's the problem? They will all become hosts. The Visser is displeased with our slow progress. Let him be. I'm only carrying out orders from the Council. We all know where your loyalties truly lie, Courant. You know how successful BU now is. The Council simply recognizes that. How long will we allow their investigation to continue? Despite their incompetence, recruitment in the sharing has gone down since they started. You know I'm absolutely with you on taking all of them. But I don't foresee there being a problem. Things are going smoothly. I know you're planning something. Whatever you're trying to do against me, you won't succeed. The Council will know about it. What was that? It came from inside the wall. Shit. Get the raid. What is this? They know who we are. Who is Girmis 613 We need to listen to all of these before we can try to figure any of this out. I'm playing the next one. Yes, Visser. We took the Happy Shell Sanctuary first. They're used to close proximity to creatures most humans recoil from and were therefore disarmed. Tomato Growers Anonymous posed no issue either. Their members are weak addicts. The Green Street Society is taken care of as well. Sir, yes. Is there someone else in the room with him? Who is he talking to? Are our people now. We have a significant stake in their group and can easily steer them towards our goals. What is that noise? Is someone eating ribs? All but one, sir. The older forest woman. But we have one of our people prepared for her. We will succeed with her, Visser. She is... Yes, Visser. Corant 291 will soon be out of the picture. Visser, with all due respect, would that not draw unwanted attention from the council? Corant's host is tied to her reputation in the sharing, in BU now. If Corant is forced to take another host, she would not be able to continue leading BU now as an unknown. The program would fail. Ah, but Visser, every time one turns up missing, they get more and more suspicious. There are already suspicious fingers pointed at the sharing, as you know. But we have a plan in motion that will remove Karant's influence, destroy her ties with the Council, and allow your plans for the sharing to flourish. Take them. In the first place, there'll be no need to cater to their suspicions. Y- yes, Visser. Look at me when I'm talking to you. No need to avert your eyes. Now hand me my clothing. Yes, Visser. The spies, why are they still a concern? One of the sporadic phantoms is already one of our people, Visser. We are making progress with the other two, and in the meantime, we will use them to accomplish all as promised, without arousing suspicion from the council or the general public. See to it that you do not fail, Minus, now go on and introduce me. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. That was from tonight. That was Stinton. Someone put the recorder in the dressing room. Did they know that we wanted to do that? How did they get it back there? Why are they talking like that? Why are they talking about posts? What the hell is going on? One more. The sharing is using you. They're using your podcast. They're manipulating your investigation. 
None of the phone numbers can be trusted. And we know one of you is already a controller. Now that means one of you is compromised. We're going to find out who it is. Get out of this now. It's not worth the risk. The sharing will take your lives if they don't kill you. Phone numbers can never leave. It's from Share the Truth. All of these recordings. The hackers. How did you already know the password, Kyle? I said I don't know. I must have heard it from the waiter. That's not what you said. It's what I meant. The waiter? Did we get his name? Who was he? I don't know! Okay, let's slow down, please. This is a lot to process, and we need to stop freaking out. What did they say? We're being manipulated. They're working against Elizabeth. And Elizabeth's working against us. And they said... Did they say that one of us was working for them? One of their people? What? No way. Impossible. Are they trying to set us up or something? I don't understand. How could one of us be working for the sharing? That concludes Sporadic Phantoms Episode 7, The Informant. Tune in next month for Episode 8. In our next episode, well, we were just hit with a lot of information. And a lot of new questions. Who can we trust? We'll need to figure out what's going on soon. Because if not, I think we're in trouble. Special thanks to Kay Applegate, Julie Becker, Joe Botch, Zoe Michelle Bradshaw, Shaul Rick Chasen, Flavia Fazenda, Betsy Gagney, Scott Gagnon, Megan Griffin, Jesse Honard, Belinda Jew, Lisa Lang, Tara Lapori, Brian Murphy, Max Pacheco, Robin Robbins, Abby Savoy, Nora Scanlon, Taylor Schmidt, and Nate Barnado. And shout out to our new Patreon subscribers, Oren and John Maz. Thanks to you, I was able to purchase a tie for the benefit dinner. And if you'd like to contribute to our investigation and help us pay for the fancy mics we bought for this, visit our Patreon. If you have any information about the sharing or anyone we've mentioned, or if you'd like to talk with us and other listeners, you can tweet at us or join our Discord server. The links are on our website, sporadicphantoms.com. Where do we go from here? I don't know what we can believe, but... If those recordings are legit, maybe we can believe Share the Truth. I mean, why would someone from the sharing let us have that information? If Elizabeth is working against us, then Dolan could be on to something too. But there's no way that one of us would betray the investigation. Maybe we need to keep a closer eye on the people nearest to us. Yeah, even you.